Cheers everybody, welcome to a very special video because in this video we're not just reviewing one beer, we're reviewing four. Now, this beer has been doing the rounds, um, well this pack has been doing the rounds on YouTube in the, over the past week. Um, and for me, curiosity is the key with this because when you see something advertised the way it is, um, you want to give it a go and, you know, see what your own personal opinion of it is. Now, I haven't watched anybody else's video on this um, because I think, you know, when a beer comes out and it's appearing everywhere on YouTube um, and you haven't done it yet, it's best to not watch anybody's because, you know, you want to get your own... Um, put your own stamp on a review and not be influenced by anybody else. So we're off to Northern Monk. We have got a pack of beer, which this is a dig at Morrison's because I went to Morrison's Tuesday, my local Morrison's Tuesday, and they didn't have it in the beer aisle. So I thought they haven't got it in. Went to Morrison's yesterday, and it still wasn't in the beer aisle. I thought, for fuck's sake, where the hell is this fucking pack, right? Now, this pack was tucked right the way around the corner, nowhere near the fucking beer, more to do with the fucking cakes. But I can see why it was near the cakes, being what it is, being Aunt Bessie's. Boys and girls, we've got a four-pack from Northern Monk, and it is... A four pack of Aunt Bessie's. Now, Northern Monk. Um, what do I think of Northern Monk? First off, I think their core cool range beers, just, you know, their core cool range beers are very, very good. I, I've enjoyed all their, you know, faith, you know, and all that. I enjoy them. Um, and there's been some really good beers available in Morrison's. The thing with Northern Monk is. I don't know whether to take this lot serious or not sometimes because they've done this, the Aunt Bessies. They did uh, the Ron Seal Bitter. They did the Henderson's Relish uh, beer. Um, Henderson's Relish, for all you Southerners down there, it's a Northern delicacy, so you won't know what Henderson's Relish is. So when I saw this, they have had this, you know, a couple of beers. I think all are these beers all... Already been available in larger cans? They might be, I'm not too sure. I know the Joe Roly Poly one has. So, this was £5.50. There you go. There's the four beers. There's, I'll show you the back of the box. It says, there's now better than a roast dinner at home. Um, now, you know, roast dinners, let's face it. Roast dinners. Um... Everybody in this country has got their opinion of the ideal roast dinner, haven't they? I mean, some people will go to the pub and they come to me, JB, go to blah, 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 blah. If they do a really good roast dinner and you go there and you personally think the roast dinner's shit, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very much of a, a polarising opinion on what is the perfect roast dinner, you know. Obviously, there's different meats, there's different veg, there's different quantities. Me, personally, I like a big roast dinner. I like a roast dinner on the plate like that, and it's weighed itself down. And um, out of all the meat, what's my favourite? I think I like all of them. I mean, lamb's all right. Um, if I had a choice at a carvery, what do I go for? I think I'd go for all the cuts of meat, if they'd give, them, give me them anyway. <laughs> so, this box comprises of four beers one of them's a roast dinner i'll tell you what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna open the box and show you what's inside this is gonna be a long video if you're getting a bit pissed off with me talking too much i suggest you fast forward um like you do because i do you know this could be half hour this the way i bloody go on so First of all, let's get the cans out. Let's see what we've got. Um, we have got a Jam Roly Poly uh, and Custard Pale Owl, which I think I've already done. There you go. 
I think I've already done that. Um, sure I have. Because I think they had it in Morrison's in a larger can. Then we've got an apple crumble and custard pale ale. There you go. Now this is clocking at 4.5% ABV. This is clocking at 4.5% ABV. I've got a feeling all these are going to clock in at 4.5% ABV. We have also got sticky toffee pudding and custard porter. Okay. 4.5% ABV. And the first one I'm going to start off with is a roast dinner brown ale. 4.5% ABV. Now, first of all, there's warning signs already for me. Because everything's the same strength. So for me, if everything's the same strength, and they're selling this off at £5.50 for four beers, that tells me these could be the same beers with all different adjuncts in. Um, which is a lazy way of doing it. I reckon it will be. But if it's done right, it will be very enjoyable. If it's done wrong, it's going to be a bit of a car crash. So... First beer we're going to do is obviously the roast dinner. Savoury before sweet, boys and girls. That's what you always do. There's now better than a roast dinner at home, they say. So what we got there? Roast dinner, 4.5% ABV. Um, does it give me any hops or anything? It's not going to say, is it? It's not going to say. Uh, I can't see. I haven't got me fucking glasses. You can tell I'm getting old because I... <laughs> Fucking glasses. I always used to say to my old man, my old man used to say, Oh, I can't read that. I need my fucking glasses. I know what he means. <laughs> I know what he means now. So I thought, as it, we got a four beers full of absolute adjuncts, let's get the old, the other adjunct lot, adjunct lot, get the tiny rebel glass out. So let's crack this open like you do and give it a whiff first. Does that smell like roast dinner? No, it fucking doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't smell really of anything. It, it is, it's like maltiness there, but I wouldn't say it smells like your roast potatoes cooking in goose, goose fat and stuff like that. So let's pour it out like you do. And... I'll only do a swig, because if I drink all of them, it's going to be a very long video. So, there we go. Roast dinner, as you can see. Um, it is it got, Does it look like gravy? It doesn't look much, much life to me, to be honest. There's a little bit of carbonation there. Um, <laughs> what do I think of it so far? It looks a bit flat. Does it? Let's get a I mean, it's maltiness there. There's a, not much. You know, I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna go in because I'm not getting on the. I'm not getting it on much on the on the nose. So I'm gonna go in. Cheers, everybody. First of all, does this beer taste of potatoes, peas? Um, Yorkshire pudding, batter mix, does it taste any of these? No. Um, does it taste like a generic brown ale? Not even that. It's thin in body. There's a maltiness. You could say, you could say that you could improve this by sticking a load of gravy granules in and maybe... Just maybe it might give you a little bit of a taste of a roast dinner. Um, it's not there to it. Bitter, yeah, back end. Slightly silky mouthfeel. Maltiness. It tastes more like, you know, out of all, out of all the ingredients of a roast dinner... It tastes more like a gravy than anything else. Um, 4.5% ABV. Nah. Not really. It's not doing it for me. 
So that's the first course over with. Now we've got three puddings. Now, you know, if I told Mrs. B we've got three puddings, she'll be up here like a shot. So we're going to go with the jam, roly poly and custard pow out. Now, I swear this was stronger. I, I, did, I thought I kept the can to check, but I haven't. I think I've chucked it out. I, th I thought that was a lot stronger, that. Put it in the comments. Tell me what you think. Um, so let's crack it open. Second course, I do like a good jam roly poly and custard. I really do. Um, sometimes when I go out to the, the fish and chip place and that, you know, Hannigan chips and jam roly poly and a cup of tea. Oh, or a bottle of black sheep even. So, let's pour it out. Now, I'm thinking of the price point of this pack because it is relatively cheap for something which is pretty much gimmicky. So, as you can see, a little bit of a head to it. Um, let's get a whiff from the can. That smells of sweet jam, in a way. Um, it smells adjunct. It smells of adjunct. It's adjunct right up to its neck. It really is. <laughs> Being a glass. It's key slightly cloudy. Thin in head. Let's get a whiff. Yeah. Now it's jam, custard. I've had this more or less before. I'm going to go in. Cheers. It's got the same level of bitterness as the brown ale. Obviously, it's got to have different... It's got to be a di different recipes for these beers. It's got to be, you know, from brown ale to a pow... Well, they're calling that a brown ale and a pow ale. They're all pow owls, aren't they, apart from the... Oh, we've got a porter. So do I think the brown ale and the porter might have been, you know, twiddled about? And that these two pals being twiddled about, you know, together. I, I, I could imagine it would be. I could imagine that this pal owl could be the same base beer of this pal owl, but with different adjuncts added. Um, but we go further in, boys and girls. Mouthfeel. It's slightly smooth. It is sweet. Do I pick up the custard? I can't. I haven't got my spectacles. Is it on the back bottom here? Does it tell me? What are they saying about that? They got. Well, we go to we go to that after the reviews because I can waffle. Um, it's sweet. You do maybe get an essence of a jam roly poly and custard in it. Um. Too sweet for me. I, you know, I haven't got really a sweet tooth. Um, I'm going again. <clears throat> and yeah, I suppose it's drinkable, but a little bit, a little bit sweet. I think a lot of people won't like that. One more for the road. <sighs> um. Not great, a bit thin. So, next one. Well, I'm going to go to the other pal out. Now, this is the apple crumble and custard pal out. So, if that's jam roly poly and custard, I imagine there'll be a slight deviation in adjunct, I think, between these two beers. Um, I'm not a brewer, but. Come on, you're selling these packs for £5.50, right? So the cost of brewing has got to be pretty much, very, very much to a minimum. So to dress something up, well, I'm going off again. I'm going to get to that at the end. <laughs> so we're going, this is a long one, isn't it? <laughs> you're, getting your, you're, getting, you're getting lots of JB <laughs> this, this weekend. You had an 18-minute walkabout, strut about in yes, uh, yesterday's uh, uh, video. you got this, got to be half-hour beer review in this one. And tomorrow I've got another strut about, and I? I think I have. Anyway, yeah, get the apple there. Slight spicy out. Let's pour it in. Mm. 
That'll do. That'll do. Stick it there. So, what have we got here? Yeah, nice beer. You know what it is, I think, because my glass was slightly wet um, from the first, from the brown owl, and of course it didn't give it much of a head, and I think that's why I'm starting to get um, more, more head. <laughs> what am I getting at? Yeah, you get the apple. You get a slight spicy note. Could be a hint of cinnamon in it. So yeah, does it smell? I get loads of apple, not much custard in that room anyway. I've got to go in. Cheers. More or less the same mouthfeel. Oh, it's exactly the same mouthfeel to jam only bowling custard. Apple, yeah. Is there custard there? I think that apple is such a dominant note that any custardiness is not there. It's just not there. Um, so for me, it's slightly sickly sweet, very much like the jam roly poly. Um, so, for me, it's still, you know, it's still, it's still not great at all. Um, I'll go in again. It's just too much of that apple for me in that, with a slight bitter kick. And you're not getting any custodiness there for me, so... It does fall flat uh, on itself, definitely. So we go to the last one. The last one. This is the uh, sticky toffee pudding and custard. Most probably my porter. Most probably my favourite dessert ever. Especially in them Heinz tins, you know. Used to, you know, boil up in the saucepan. Um... <laughs> Did one explode on me once? I think they did. Anyway, so this is clocking at, of course, 4.5% ABV. There you go. Okay. Let's crack it open. See what you get, like you do. Smells actually like sticky toffee pudding. Yeah. Then it fades because then I'm not getting any. It's it's just that the, it just faded away. Um, so let's pour it in. What like you do? That should be enough. So nice head. Is it jet black? Well, yeah, sort of, yeah. I would say it looks a little bit muddy for me. Um, let's get a whiff. Oh, stick that there, of course. Got to stick that beer there, aren't we? <laughs> um, yeah, you do get the toffee. Um, again, custody note. I'm not too sure about that. I'm going to go in. Cheers. Mouthfeel, quite smooth. You get a slight aeration of a sticky toffee pudding. There's a slight aeration there to it in the mouthfeel. It's quite slick, slightly thick. And yeah, um, actually quite, yeah, it's thin in body. I think the I think this beer would be a lot better if the ABV was ramped up a little bit. It's a little bit thin. But as for the taste notes, they are there. Um, you do actually pick up the custard from, from yourself. So, yeah. So that's your sticky toffee pudding porter. So let's bring them all back, shall we? Oh, no, no, actually, I'll just finish this off. It's not changing, it's just, it's there, those flavours are there, but, you know, 
I think out of um, out of the four of them, I think this one may be the better one. I think. Um, let's bring them through. Bring them through. Bring them all out again. <laughs> right. There you go. There they are. There's the family. What do I think? Well, what do I think? It feels... It's a gimmick, isn't it? Let's face it. This whole shurah that Northern Monk do with Aunt Bessie's, it's a gimmick. It, people will buy it because they'll be curious, you know? The, the advertising, the marketing is spot on for them. Let's face it. So I've got the ingredients on the back of this box. So I'm looking at the ingredients. Um, natural flavours. Um, they're not giving me any of the hops. Basically, if they're all the same strength, I think the Pow Owls, them two, are most probably... Without the, you know, take the adjuncts away and the natural flavourings, they are the same. Uh, the porter and the brown ale, there'll be obviously slight deviations um, regarding brewing. Obviously, one's a porter, one's a brown ale, but I reckon they would have made shortcuts in brewing then. As far as, because I've seen headlines, you know, is craft beer, they're going to kill craft beer off. I mean... There are breweries out there which do not do this. Do not do gimmicky beers, okay? There's brewers who have been going for years, you know, who do not do gimmicky beers, really. You know, Fuller's is, is an old traditional brewery. They have got a lot of respect from a lot of people into their beer. They don't really do gimmicky beers they're a traditional brewery but at the end of the day the process of brewing craft beer and, and producing traditional beer wherever you are is the same really the craft beer tag is a tag aimed at the younger generation now when we come to beers like this i mean it's it's meant to be a little bit of fun it's meant to be a little bit fun me personally what do I think of these beers? I think all of them are pretty, pretty shit, to be honest. Um, if I had to choose one out of the three or four of them, it would be the Porter. I think the Porter, out of the, the four of them, is the better one. But, you know, when you look at something like this, you know, it's not really meant to be taken seriously. Northern Monk... When they're firing on all cylinders, fire on cylinders, they have done some spectacular beers over the years. And when they do so, it's meant to be a little bit of fun. So do I think craft beer is dying? No, I don't. Far from it. I think, you know, we're going through difficult times for breweries, of course. I think the big boys will keep going. Um, as far as this is concerned, do I think it tarnishes northern monks reputation doing this no because i see it as a gimmick a little bit like a curl curled up fish you get in a christmas cracker you know it's it's gimmicky it's a jokey thing it's to be taken light-heartedness if i paid a lot of money for this then you know then you know i would be a little bit more harsher on it but it's five pound fifty for four I think. Well, I didn't pay over six with it. So, when you look at it the way it is, it's it's meant to be a little bit of light-heartedness fun. You know? I think um, they are pretty ropey and pretty shit, to be honest. But, you know, it, it's, it makes me smile just seeing the, you know, the way it's portrayed on the can. And, and so it should be fun. Beer should be fun at the end of the day. And, if you know, to have a sense of humour and to put out beers like this, yeah, it should be fun. But, you know, you take it with a pinch of salt, like, you know, with a lot of things. So, for me, I'm not going to tell you not to buy them. I think um, if you've got a sense of humour sense of humor and you want a bit of fun, go out and get them. I don't know how long they're going to be out for, you know. 
I'm glad I bought. I don't feel aggrieved by spending five fifty on because it's just fun, fun. That word fun. People have forgotten what fun is. You know, people get offended by everything these days. But this is just a little bit of fun. Have they pulled it off? Have they? Fuck. <laughs> Boys and girls, I waffled on for 25 minutes, but it's been a pleasure, this one. Um, Northern Monk, Aunt Bessie's. Pick one up. Tell me what you think, because at the end of the day, it's all about a bit of fun. A little bit of what we do on YouTube. It's all about fun. Time to go. Time for the feet to hit the street. Look after yourselves, everybody. Um, see you all on... I think I've got a food review next. Anyway, see you on the next one. Bib bib.